Hello and welcome back to the Wargaming Golden League with your host Storjan and High Flyer Fifteen. Woo! We're Woo! Racing TV, and this is the Star Ladder, the Russian Golden Battles of the best of the best of the best. It's the Pro League equivalent for um, Europe. Anyway, oh yeah, the first battle was amazing. We saw Nod take an easy eight to the field, and actually in the final battle, I didn't check last time, but it did 1,200 damage, just as much, if not more, than the T69s and co. However, we currently have for you in the training room, Rage versus Aces SJ. Let's go in and have a look at the lineup, sir. What do you see? GW Panther! G what, the GW? And also what? the Panzer 1C. Ausführungsee, yeah, mm. that's a very interesting choice if they decide to go with that. On the other side, know. we see T2 and a Chaffee! Uh, oh this is... Miss, <laughs> Mr. We're not going to see any of the different tanks, and what do we see? <laughs> Shut up, you. <laughs> I love Abby. i got to say that this is my favourite map, and look at this. The diversity of the strategies of everything else. I just... Love it. The, the, the strategies of the the teams on Abbey, the way they go about things, the different things you can do, the routes you can go, you can cross over, dive off hills, and the, the lot, there's no wrong lineup. There's no cookie cutter. And that's what I think was missing with the other maps. Is there's a cookie cutter that everyone uses for their base, and then they tweak it a little bit to suit them. I don't know. Yeah, that, that's how it's been. It's always been little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then the other team also takes that, and then they just change one tank, and it's the well, the game changer, like the double IS, which proved to be useful in some matches, but in general, just having a lot of shells to fire at one point in time is much better. Yeah, indeed. Uh, well, Lobster, we thought, were just getting out battled. They were playing well, their formations were pretty decent, their locations were pretty good, but they just seemed to lose the actual combat. And then in game four, one guy takes on three, no, six, and wins, which is just crazy. Anyway, enough talking about the previous battle, because this battle is just about to start with... Rage versus Aces SJ. We're looking from the point of view of Rage, and we have an amazing game coming up for you with a Chaffee and a GW. In fact, the entire lineup is just, well, actually, not so different. The core lineup's the same AMX 5100, AMX 1390, T69 times two. But then the last three, the, the way they're spending the last points, are totally different. Yep. Look at the interesting. pinks. Interesting. Very interesting. Look at the pinks. What the pinks? And that's the, they're going to spread out with their T2 and their Chaffee. Because they've got two scouts. And that's the thing we've been missing from the other teams. Both these teams are taking two scouts. Where in the previous battle, Lobster and Nod decided that they were going to run either without scouts or just with the T1. Yeah. We see the T2 just motoring away down the east side. Clearly going for the bushes all the way up. And there's not really much that can actually get there as fast, apart from the Ausführung C, which yeah, they should be using the speed of that one, and then the T1 just having the, the usual spotting positions. But we see that uh, Deagle is spotted in the middle. Uh, C69 versus um, uh, Chaffee and T69. And that's very usual, sending one of them to the middle to be able to see things. But this is a really interesting formation. I don't know where to look. Because if we look, bring up the main, main, big mini-map, we've got like a diagonal. They've taken half the map, but a diagonal. They've got Anladis and Blackmailer and the AMX 5100 and the T69 covering the southwest position. The middle is covered by the Chaffee and T69. The Stumpan's obviously in base giving support to everybody. And the AMX 1390 with the T1 pushing up on the other side. They're so spread out. If a big push came, they're losing two tanks definitely before the battle begins. Yeah. And the, uh, the T2 nearly got... Ooh, they're actually keeping the... Uh... The East safe with an AMX 1390. That's a very expensive uh, scout. Unless there's more up there, of course. And uh, Hey6 just got hit. I should say hi. 6 just got hit and he's down to 8 HP. Uh, he's still alive though, which is impressive. That, that extra bit of HP is all you need to survive. 
And with eight, he's still alive and kicking, trying to spot who is down the other side. Red already goes down. Did you? He got caught out down the yeah. uh, eastern flank. Red is a crazy character we saw on Mines. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah, he got completely ramped by the T2, and the T2 just took the damage and, uh, and didn't care. And now he's just sitting there going back and forth, back and forth. And the Chaffee has moved up. And Hardy's uh, taking quite a bit of damage, actually, in the middle there, trying to do something against Asa and Kassaris. But yeah. not able to make anything happen. We don't know what's going on with Aces SJ. Um, the forces have not been spotted, but they've just deployed their hand as I spoke. Artosis and Scorpic goes in, taking quite a bit of damage from the crossfire here from Atlantis and Blackmailer. They're in a much superior position. If they can focus down Scorpic, there he goes down. That's a huge deal because they won't have enough shells to kill either Blackmailer and Atlantis. And Artosis actually is failing to penetrate with many of the shells. Uh, Blackmailer goes down to 704 HP, but Artosis will not be able to take him down as he tries to retreat out there, but he's not going to get far as Atlantis comes around the back to try and take him down. But in the meantime, we have in the middle, Kassaris and Asa goes in against the Eagle and Hardy. Uh, Groff is also coming in, so unless the GW can connect with a big shell, this is going to go really south for Aces SJ. So we're looking out for them, a, them GW Panther shots because they could one-shot any of these tanks here. Groff, Asa and Kassaris could easily be taken out by that huge artillery. But Hardy S is going to go down with another two shells. If Groff, Groff and Kassaris can hit him, one more. Does someone have a shell left? Groff does and says, good night. Asa, though, is uh, in the chaffee and doesn't have to reload. Blocking the eagle for trying to run away. Trying to wait for a Kassaris to reload, but he does get past. Unfortunate position from Asa. He does... Has he reloaded? I didn't, thought I saw him no. shoot there. Yeah, no? he's... No. There he does. Still reloading. Yep, there he did. But he goes down with very minimal thing. And the GW Panther... Uh, um, did Turret... Torin actually get any damage off? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I want to see the stats of that GW Panther again because mm. it seemed like a waste of points. In That's this a round, lot of points. Six points is a yeah. lot of points to take, and I, I just don't think we saw anything from him. No. Hmm. And the Panzer, the Austrian has gone all the way down south to get into the base. Let's see if he can even penetrate this. Um, Storm Panzer's fire. He is doing some damage, but 106. Splat. So I was trying to update 108. the listings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was updating the listing, so I didn't actually catch that action. So I apologize there, guys. Um, but where is it? GW Panther. One shell connected for 554. Yeah. Ouch. But, you know, the T-69s and stuff, you can look at them and say, oh, but they didn't do much damage either. Well, yeah, but they also gave HP. They were, you know, tanking shells. They were um, blocking shells. They were in doing more than just damage. The GW doesn't offer any of that. It just does damage. So the GW Panther needs to do more than his teammates actually successfully be its, you know, earn its points. Yeah. It really has to do more than that. That was like, what, twice the amount of HP it has? That's not enough. That's so not enough. You have to at least kill six of your own kind mm -hmm. to be worth it in, um, in such a tournament like this. League. Yes, the League. I keep calling it a tournament too, but it's the League. <laughs> it's the League. But that was our first game of this set, guys. The sets of five games. And after this one, uh, we have the schedule as follows. Um, Red Gra versus New Star. And that should be at 9 o'clock Central European. All the times we display for you Central European for your benefit. If you don't know what time that is in your local time, there is online conversions. And we do have them, I believe, linked below. So, yeah. What do you think of these uh, different lineups uh, and the tactics used in this first game? Do you think we're going to see that trend continue? I'm hoping it now because I got served for saying no. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to see because it, it it's just refreshing. Even though the GW Panther didn't do nearly a, enough damage, it was still it's still more fun to see um, instead of a game where 
it's it's like chess where you, one make one move and if that moves um, you know, wrong then the yeah. whole game could be thrown so I'm, I'm a lot more excited for these type of lineups totally and are we seeing any changes uh, we see a few people leaving and a few things happening but yeah, no. it doesn't look like any significant changes did they have two AMX 1390s last time? No, they had an AM6100. Oh, I didn't think so. Are you still there? Hmm? Did they have two of them? Did they have two? Aces M- SJ. They don't yeah. have an AMX5100 anymore. Hmm. So instead of that, they've gone for an extra speed? AMX90. Yeah. Is that for a pack maneuver? Do they think that they were just spread out too much with their 5100 being that much slower? Hmm. <sighs> Hmm. Interesting. This is the first team without a, isn't it? Without a heavy tank, is it? I believe so. Everyone else had a few AMX 5100s, but 